Hey everyone, my name is Michelle. I'm a flight attendant in New York City. I'm also a social media consultant and photographer. And a lot of my videos are about like how to be cheap <laughs> while being a flight attendant or how to make money or save money. I wanted to talk today about, I guess, entering the fields. And there are two questions I get a lot. And I, I hope that I can cover them in this video okay so the first thing I want to talk about I, let's let's talk about being plus size in this industry I do get a lot of women especially when I hashtag my Instagram posts and they will inbox me and ask me about you know being a flight attendant how is it being plus size it's it's great. Um, I didn't. I have not experienced any type of discrimination or anomalies on the job. Um, I'm a size 16, so technically I'm your average size woman in American standards. And to be honest, it's 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 never been a struggle. Um, it's ne there's never been anything. That would make me say, oh my God, this, this job is not for me because of my size. Now, about the job, right? So we need to be able to evacuate an aircraft and fit through the exits of a plane. So just make sure you can do that. How you can do that is you will apply for an airline see what kind of aircraft they fly and you can do that on their app like I know some main lines actually list their fleet on their app and on their websites you can see what kind of airplanes they fly go to seat guru or I think that's the name of the app that's it there's a there's a there's a website where you can see the inside of the plane a lot of people take pictures of the insides of the plane um, you can do that. You can, which basically means research. Do your research. You also want to um, look the part, and I don't just mean like dressing up for your video interview. I mean like dressing for your body type, because personally, what I'm wearing right now is just my little throw-in shirt. And it's like an old navy shirt that I got years ago when I didn't really know my body type. I threw out a lot of those clothes, but I kept this because it's sheer, it's long sleeve, it's light. I like to pack light. And so I'm on a trip now and I wear this shirt like to go down to the lobby if I need something and whatnot. So the thing is, like, I would never wear this shirt now. Because I know my body type, I know what works well. So for our plus size sisters, we would wear like midi skirts. We would wear sheath dresses with closely fitted, fitted blazers. Um, we would wear something around our neck but not too close up. Just something that elongates our neck. We would wear, we have to wear heels. Um start practicing in your in your apartment wearing high heels because most airlines do want you to actually wear high heels I think maybe all of them want you to wear your high heels in the concourse and then you can only change it to your service shoes once the plane door closes so keep in mind that there is a uniform you have to look the part but when you go to the interview show them that you're stylish that you're sassy um it's just it's just a matter of marketing yourself, right? You want to make sure you look the part, act the part, and you want to give them the idea that you know how to do this before you even get the job. So a lot of it is dressing for the part, research, as I said, and just basically showing up, being your beautifully bubbly self, you know, take care of your health, even though we're plus size, I'm plus size, like, I looked at a flight attendant tonight, 
she, her face when she saw me swapping out my drawers, my bins, because as a flight attendant, you need to be able to push, pull, bend, stretch to be able to restock carts. It's tight confining spaces. You're like, oh my God, like I have to actually do this in here. Like you have to be able to do all those things. And as a plus size woman, I can say other women my size, I'm much more fit than they are. I work out at least twice a week when I'm at home, twice a week at home and at least once on the road. I try to do this because I can't, you know, I have to be active. You have to remain active. And a lot of times we are sedentary, you know, especially if you're, say, today I deadheaded for two hours. I sat for two hours. Then I sat for a few more hours waiting for my next flight because I had a, they call it a long sit in the crew room. But anyway, being plus size is a beautiful thing. Just be healthy enough to, you know, be your best self. And it will show when you go to your interview, okay? If you have any questions about how I... Maybe I should do a video about how I dress outside of the office. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about how to dress for an interview as a plus-size woman, maybe I can have someone film it and I could be hands-free and show you how I actually dress outside of work. And you'll get an idea of how to look as a plus-size woman. So the next thing I want to talk about, which is more cut and dry. Okay, so sometimes I get, oh, you're a flight attendant. I just applied to a company. I speak three languages or I have my master's. Basically, they're trying to tell me how qualified they are for the job, but they feel as though they were rejected because of their age. Now, I have an idea for this. If you've ever had, if you've ever gone through the process of being a flight attendant, one thing about this job is that because they tend to open the job and it's a, there are a lot of applicants, you will have to do a video interview and or phone interview. So, and this is to just screen before they invite you for the face to face. This is usually how it goes. So here's the thing, before you do your video interview, go to the MAC counter or whatever makeup counter at your local department store, go get a refreshing makeover, you know, do it on a day that you feel most relaxed. For me, that would be Saturday mornings or a morning, like a Friday, Saturday morning um, when I'm just like coming off of work or ending my work week. Maybe you feel most relaxed on Sunday evening after you do like church or your yoga class. Do it when you are relaxed and you are easy to just like you, you, you're not like, I guess, nervous. Try to do it at a relaxed time. Get your makeup done. And men, this applies to you too, because as a photographer, we offer, um, when I have my studio, we offer a package to men. We would call it um, complexion evening. Or instead of saying makeup, guys, get your makeup done. Most men won't, you know, it won't apply. They don't feel as that applies to them. So they won't add it on to their package. And it could affect the photos. We don't want you to buy a package with makeup. We want you to get makeup done so that you look better in your photos. Sometimes we called it hairline toning, where my makeup artist would tone the hairline. So this applies to women and men. But the point is, if you go to the mat counter and you say, I'm doing a video interview. I have a really crappy MacBook. That would be me talking right now. I want to look my best in this interview, even though it's a video. Can you... Like, you know, rejuvenate my face. Just make me look like I have on soap opera makeup or, you know what I'm saying? Like, not TV makeup, but because TV makeup tends to be very heavy. But tell them that you want something that's going to make you look lighter and refreshed for the screen. That's going to be something different. 
And when they do this, I think you'll get the results that you're looking for. Um, typically, I'm okay, so right now, I have a video, a getting ready with me video from two or three years ago. And if you look at the beginning of the video, I'm very candid. I don't have any makeup on and I want you to see what I look like beforehand. And this is contouring, highlighting underneath my eyes, um, reverse contouring, and this is at the end of the night, and I look, I still look pretty good. I don't powder during the day because I don't, I feel like it clogs my pores, but I, I reverse contour here, darken here. I mean, like I have hairline contour. If I showed you my picture of what I look like after, you'd be like, wow. So don't underestimate the power of makeup. And and what we used to, what we always tell my clients when they're getting their makeup done for a shoot, it's so beautiful. I don't want to wash it off when I get home. Make a day out of it. You go get your makeup done. You go do your video interview. And then go out to brunch with your wife, your husband, whoever. Like, you know, make a day out of it. Go experience, you know, a rejuvenated look. And it does. it's not going to be like a full face either. It can just be a little bit of concealer and the edge, but with no powder so it doesn't go on your lines. Like me, I have really bad lines on me here. Like, I'm 40, so not that every 40-year-old looks as good to me as me. I'm proud to say that. But also, not every 40-year-old has a lot of lines underneath their eyes, which I do. So I just say this to say, you know, don't give up on your dream. The flight attendant industry does not discriminate. When I was in my first training class, we had a pretty young class, you know, looking, young looking, like I was like going on 40, I'm sitting in the front row because at this airline they seated us in age order like oldest up front, youngest in the back. The girl that was sitting there, she was over 50. She didn't look her age, but she was over 50. Um, the, the, the second training I went to, the oldest person in the room was like maybe in his 60s. And there were other women in, our, in, the, tr in the class next door that were in their 60s. So technically, it can happen for you just rebrand or market yourself differently you know don't because the thing about it is some airlines require makeup some airlines don't so just because that airline does not require makeup that does not mean that you should not show up to you know the event the interview the video interview work even without makeup you know Put a little bit of effort. And I think that if you not only just do your makeup, but go have it done, they can show you the quickest way to... Because me, I take long on my face because it's a part of my routine of getting ready. It's just a ritual that I like to do for myself to relax before I go out to work. It's a little pampering. But... Chances are you're not going to spend an hour sitting in the MAC makeup counter chair. She's going to, he or she is going to show you how to do it really quickly because she doesn't have much time. She has other customers that she has to deal with. But that makeup artist is going to do it precisely the way it needs to be done. And how you're going to test it is you're going to grab your phone and do a test. I would say test it with the flash on and the flash off. Take a picture of yourself. And that is going to be the best way to ace your video interview and possibly the in face the face to face interview if you are a mature adult looking to get into the industry. So that's it. 14 minutes, way too long. I hope that this was helpful. I figure I want to do videos of you know really important content matter and it hopefully the weirdness of my photos, my video doesn't matter in that sense. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you again on another video. I'm signing off.